Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries, located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Due to the coronavirus outbreak and social distancing, First Baptist Church has suspended its formal services. This outbreak will not stop his disciples from working. You may visit our website, firstbaptisthbgva.org. First Baptist Church features the Dr. C.E. William as senior pastor. Remember, to wash your hands regularly and practice social distancing and be safe. Over the next few weeks, you will be blessed from the pastor's desk or sermons featuring him or one of our many ministers on staff. For your praying needs, you may contact our ministerial staff, deacons, or deaconess. May the Lord bless and keep you during this trying time in our nation. We hope you are blessed by the message. Once again, thank you for watching Faith is Alive Ministries. Welcome to Faith is Alive Ministries broadcast with the Dr. C. E. Williams. We hope you find something that will touch your life today and tomorrow. Faith is Alive Ministries is located at First Baptist Church, 611 Broad Street, Harrisonburg, Virginia. You may visit us any Sunday for worship service, which begins at 11 a.m. And now, open your hearts and your minds to the spirit of a living God. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As Paul often states, he makes it very important to us that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Philippians 4 and 13. And I believe that, that in our process, we would like to thank you for watching us here uh, each and every Sunday uh, during the week. And, and our utmost intent is to, to bless people with, with God's Word and produce an environment or an outreach that will allow folk uh, to return back to Christ or those who don't know Him uh, learn to, to know Him and, re and receive Him uh, as their personal Savior. And this is called a, the kingdom building process. Remember the building uh, is not the church. The church is, uh, is the people themselves. Uh, each, each and every one of us have a task and a job to do and, and we're praying that this program will bring families uh, together and congregations to, to worship and praise the Lord uh, in this ultimate day and time. Uh, remember we're one body, many members. Uh, people are hungry for the word and we, you know, we can help someone by, by seeking Christ and finding Christ uh, from within. Uh, we certainly thank you for watching uh, our, our TV series we're, we're praying for your continuous prayers uh, for this ministry as it uplifts and feeds uh, uh, the congregations as well as the communities uh, in the spirit of Christ we'll see you at the end of the program God bless you, may heaven smile upon you let us pray Father God we come to you saying thank you Thank you for allowing us to come and sit at your feet once again. Thank you for allowing us to come and sup with you. Lord, we come to praise you on this night to give you all the honor and all the glory. Have your way with me. Have your way with us. From this day forth, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Reverend Pamela Hearn. I am one of the associate pastors on Broad Street. Um, today I want to come to you and um, just share a few thoughts from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 6. I just got three little small nuggets out of that one uh, scripture verse that hopefully it will give us a better outlook on how we are to handle um, our life journey through COVID-19. So for Philippians 4, 6-7 says, 
and it reads, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Our key verse tonight is verse 6. And our three nuggets in which we're going to um, talk about tonight is prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. So here we are on Resurrection Sunday. And we have an uninvited guest in the earth. And this guest's name is COVID-19. Many have lost their lives. And many are still fighting to live. COVID is a different storm creating different damage, but we still have the same God. See, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, storms will come, but our Savior will never change. Let's take a look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. And Paul reads here saying, Be anxious for nothing. When Paul tells us to be anxious for nothing, He's saying, do not give anxiety a place to take roots in your life. Paul is basically telling us that we must learn how to replace our anxiety with God's word. See, Psalms 52, 55, and 22 tells us, cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you he shall never permit the righteous to be moved so when anxiety come into our life when it seems like the issue that we are faced against is bigger than what we are able to handle and Paul said, do not be anxious. He basically is telling us to shift our focus. Paul is trying to get us to understand how important it is for us to put God's word on it. When he said, cast your cares, your burdens on the Lord, and he shall sustain ye," he's saying, God can handle it. He can handle your workload. He can handle whatever it is that's trying to burden you down. Paul said, take it to the Father. Take it to the Father and let him deal with it. But as you take it to the Father and leave it there, don't forget you have to walk it out. You have to begin to take the word of God and begin to apply those principles upon your life. Trusting God that he would carry you and keep you and he would make everything you need available. So don't get lazy and take it to God and Walk off and think that you don't have to do anything. When you leave your problems with God, you got to walk it out. You taking it to God, say, God, I know that you got this. 
I'm going to do my part, Lord. I'm going to take your word that cannot return void, and I'm going to apply it to my situation. And I'm going to do it in faith. Whether that's mustard seed faith or that is a mountaintop faith, God, I'm going to walk this thing out because I have a put the weight load in your lap. Now I'm going to just apply the principles. And I'm going to eat from the hand of grace in faith that you got me. Paul goes on to say, but in everything by prayer, let your request be made known unto God. In everything by prayer, let your request be made known unto God. So in other words, Paul is telling us that we need to have a communication line between us and the Father. Paul is saying that we have a wireless connection. And we don't have to ever worry about the signal being dropped. When Paul said, um, in everything by prayer, let your request be made known unto God. Paul is basically saying where well, there is prayer of adoration. In the midst of COVID-19, Lord, we exalt you. Paul is saying whether there is a prayer of petition. In the midst of uncertainty, God, in the midst of COVID-19 and all the damage that is being done. Lord, I'm petitioning you the needs of my spiritual being and my physical being. But Paul don't want us to stop there when he talks about in everything by prayer, let your request be made known unto God. Paul is saying... Take it to him as an intercessor. It's because those are some peoples on the front line. Those are some doctors, some nurses, some food service workers. There are some emergency techs. There are the, the police departments. Those are all kinds of people working behind the scene. So Paul said, when you take this thing to prayer, he said, don't forget about other peoples. He said, don't forget about going and standing as an intercessory on the behalf of somebody else. It's because somebody did it for you. Somebody is still doing it for you. So don't get so caught up and eat from the hand of grace and forget to give grace. Paul want us to Understand that when we go and tell it, our request be made known unto God, that it's okay to thank him for being God. It is okay for, to thank him for being the God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Not only is it okay to thank him for being the God that don't change, but it's also okay to thank him for the different hats that he wear as God. Lord, I thank you for being Yahweh. I thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. I thank you for being my shalom, my peace. Thank you for being that place that I can find rest, God. When Paul said, um, and everything by prayer, don't forget to praise God for all that he has done forevermore. For everything that he unleashed on the cross through Jesus. For every bondage, every shackle that could have ever been put upon your life. That was broken. See Paul wanted us to understand that prayer. This prayer is a communication line. That God has given us access to. 
that is necessary for us to operate in. Then he goes on to say, and supplication. So what does it look like to let your request be made known through supplication? Here, I can begin to hear Paul saying, this is a different storm with different damage but the same God. So your supply list is going to be a little different because the storm you in is a little different than the previous storm you came out of. See, but Paul want to make sure that we understand that Philippians 4.19 says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So my question when, you, when Paul said through supplication, let your request be made known, is does the supplies on your supply list line up with Philippians 4.19? See, God will meet our needs. But does the request we ask him, we ask him for fit Philippians four nineteen? God will give us the desires of our heart, but does the desires of our heart lined up with His word, lined up with His purpose? So when we begin to seek God, we got to seek God from a place that we want to be lined up according to Jeremiah 29 and 11. And we want to do it from a place of Jeremiah 29 and 13. But we're going to seek God for his purpose. Or we're going to seek God to be our supplier. We need to make sure that the things that we want out the storehouse lined up with what Philippians 4.19 says. Then he goes on to say, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So here Paul wants us to have an attitude of gratitude. He wants us to have an attitude, the Lord, I'm thankful that your love is unstoppable. That your love reach deep. That when you love, you love hard, deep, and long. Paul said, don't take for granted that precious gift of love from God. Because you can't afford to give yourself that kind of love. This kind of love you cannot find in nowhere in the supermarket, no department stores. This kind of love you cannot patent. So Paul wants us to have an attitude of gratitude. He wants us to have an appreciation for God's infinite, unstoppable love, his unmerited favor for the very thing, that mercy that kept us, that didn't give us the punishment for what we've done wrong, but for that grace that groomed us, that shaped us and molded us for a better day to come. See, Paul said, basically, he trying to get us to understand that even though the S-U-N may not shine, the S-O-N is always on time. He said, don't depend on your natural abilities. He said, don't be so caught up and think that you got where you are by yourself. He said, learn to eat some humble pie. Learn how to walk it out. Learn have a, how to have a heart of appreciation. He said, learn how to operate in that grace card that God gave you. 
and let somebody eat off that. Don't get so selfish and self-righteous till you forget where you come from. Because the only reason you and I are where we are today is because of what Christ did on the cross. First Chronicles 16 and 34 tells us, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. He said, give thanks, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Mercy. Mean that we are not perfect. We have not arrived. That many times God does not give us the punishment for the crime that we have done on our journey in life. So why not praise a God that have unleashed the hands of grace in your life in abundance? That gave you something you can't give yourself. So basically what I want you and I to remember as we leave here today is that even though COVID-19 is in the earth, and even though COVID-19 is doing some horrific damage in the earth, COVID-19 is not more powerful than God. So when we hear the stats, and we hear all the death tolls, and we hear all worse days are coming, that's when we need to learn how to pray. As an adoration, saying, Lord, I thank you. Petition, saying, Lord, I need you to fix me and clean me spiritually and physically. Lord, I'm saying on behalf of all those on the front line. Lord, I thank you for being who you are. Lord, I praise you because of whom you are. It's time for us to get it right. Do not ever forget. I don't care what we're going through. Or how many storms we go through. One thing we can always take to the bank. That there are going to be different storms. There are going to be different damages. But we always have the same God. That is my message for you tonight. That is my message for us on this Resurrection Sunday. At this time, I would like to invite anyone that does not know God as their Savior to accept Him as their Lord and Savior. See, the Bible says that we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, thou shalt be saved. For with confession, I mean, let me go back and I don't want to quote that scripture wrong. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Let me go right back there. We don't want to lead anybody wrong. It say Romans 10, 9 through 10. He said that if thou, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes upon righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If there's one out here today that have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, welcome to the body of Christ. I invite you to find your local church, someone that a church that is a Bible teaching, uh, a place where you can learn and grow, get into Bible study, Sunday school, or you can be disciple and grow in the body of Christ. Thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to share um, a portion of my heart through God's word tonight. Until we meet again, be blessed. Praise God, we hope you enjoyed the message. Um, today, as much as we enjoyed being used by the Lord, uh, Christ said in Matthew 28 and 19, Go ye into all the world, 
teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And we got to remember the Great Commission of going out and spreading the Word of God. Uh, we must go beyond our, our place of worship. In other words, we come in to learn how to, to worship and praise and we go out to serve. And going out to serve means sometimes requiring us to go beyond the church pew uh, itself. If you'd like to become a sponsor of our program, uh, our announcer will, uh, will come right back to you shortly and we hope to see you again here on next week. Oh, if, if you're in the Harrisonburg area, uh, I want you to feel free to, to visit the, the First Baptist Church. Uh, any Sunday morning that you so desire, uh, service begins at 11 o'clock. Remember, just, just a thought for today. No one can choose your mountain or tell you when to climb. It's yours alone to challenge at your own pace and your own time. May God be with you.